Hello and welcome to our how-to video on the mobile app time logger in Mission Control. The mobile app time logger offers a, a mobile-friendly way for you to log your time in Mission Control. Um, it is uh, accessible by the um, uh, Salesforce mobile app um, and you can also access it uh, on a browser on a mobile device, um, whether that's accessing it uh, as an internal user or, or an external user through a community. As long as the log time component has been added to your page, uh, you should be able to access the mobile app time logger. Um, so within the mobile app time logger, there's uh, three different uh, tabs. So the first one is the action list, and it will display all the actions that are relevant for you um, uh, in the specified time frame. So you've got the option to see actions for the current week, so this week. Um, you can also see actions for the last week, for next week, as well as this month. Um, so any actions that you're assigned to in that time frame, uh, you'll see those actions that come up there. Um, so it serves as a way for you to quickly log your time. Um, so it shows you what you're assigned to, and then you can quickly put in time uh, in using increments of either 15 minutes or one hour. And you can also adjust that directly using the keyboard. Um, it also gives you a few quick access options, um, as well as allowing you the option to go into a bit more detail and add additional uh, details on that time log record. Um, and then you can save that time log. Um, so the action list tab will only show you actions that are assigned to you, but if you want to add it, add time to actions that are not assigned to you in that time frame. Uh, you can use the second tab called the find action. Uh, so it works similarly to the previous log time component where you'd be able to uh, put in the project, the milestone, the action, and put your hours in. Um, so if you if there's any actions that are missing from your view, uh, you can look them up using the find action tab. Uh, the third tab is the submit for approval. So any so if you're if you if time logs require uh, approval uh, in your org um, uh, you can use the submit for approval tab to uh, sub submit a for approval. Um, so any time log that is in the pending stage uh, or pending status uh, will show up there, whether you create it from the mobile app or from the desktop. Um, uh, any time logs that you've created uh, for yourself will, sh will show up over there. So within the submit for approval tab, uh, you can do a um, bulk edit to submit all of them, or you can do individual uh, submission of each time logs, uh, and you can also add in uh, additional details to those existing time logs. Um, so yeah, so let's jump into the demo. All right, so I'm in the Salesforce mobile app, and uh, I've got the time logger item in here. Um, you, you'll need to make sure you add it to the Salesforce navi mobile navigation from setup. Uh, I'll go through that in a bit. Uh, but uh, you you can access the mobile uh, mobile app time logger from here. So as you can see, there's a few different tabs in here. I've got the uh, action list tab where I can switch between different views. So I can choose to see actions that are relevant to me in this week, uh, in in the last week, in the next week, and this month. So any actions that are assigned to me in that time frame will show up over here, and I can quickly log time to them. So I'll see. Uh, as you can see, I've got a few different actions in here. Um, I, I'm seeing the action details uh, as well as uh, some other fields from the action. I've got the action pan ID uh, and then I've got the action name and project. Um, you are able to add uh, additional fields over here if you need to see more information on that action. Um, and that's done uh, through a field set, uh, which we'll cover off in a bit. Um, so let's go through some of these buttons in this uh, action row over here. So I've got this uh, button here, which is uh, displaying 15 minute increments and uh, one hour increments. So I can use those buttons to quickly put time in against that action. So if I do that, uh, it's gonna put 15 minutes in. If I do that, it's gonna put an hour in. I can also choose to just update the values in directly using the key keypad here. Uh, up next, we've got the uh, billable icon. So red billable icon, uh, red icon indicates it's non-billable and green icon indicates it's uh, billable. Uh, but if I try and click on that, it's not gonna change that. And that's because the action is non-billable. Um, however, this action is billable. So if I click on that, I can switch between the two. So I've got the, up next, I've got the pencil icon, which allows me to edit uh, the time log. So I can add additional details. Um, so I've got the, some of these standard fields in here that you won't update. Uh, but if you, there are additional fields that you'd like to update, you can add that through a field set. Again, I'll cut that off soon. So let's put some details in here. Um, let's put the time log type admin and go ahead and save. So once I do that, it's uh, notifying me that those changes have been uh, confirmed. Uh, it's still not committed to the database. It's not saved just yet. Um, so uh, we'll go through them in a bit. Uh, the next icon is the cancel icon, which allows me to 
undo any of my changes because we're still in draft mode. Um, so I can undo any changes that way. Uh, the last icon I've got is the, uh, the start timer icon, start and stop timer icon. So when I click that, it'll turn red and it'll start the timer for that action. And it'll also prevent me from updating the hours or putting hours in through increments because we're now tracking time through the start and stop time fields. Um, so I can click the pencil icon. I can go in and add additional information in that I, uh, that I want to add in and uh, I can go on from there. So see, so it's still uh, running that time in the background. We'll come back to, in a, uh, come back to that in a bit. Um, and uh, we can go in and uh, put some more time logs in. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Now we'll see that those actions have been reset. So if I need to lock time to that specific action again, I can do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and refresh my view here, and we'll see that the uh, the timer that had started, it's now tracking the amount of time that has been passed. So when you've started the timer, you come back to it later on, it will let you know how many uh, hours or minutes you've completed so far, and then you can choose to stop the timer from there. So if I just click on the um, the clock icon again, uh, it'll let me know that the timer has been stopped, it'll let me know how many uh, hours that converts to, um, and I can go ahead and uh, add any more details, update something else, uh, or I can click save to confirm that. So let's say that maybe I need to lock time to uh, to an action that's not in my in my view here in this week. Uh, so I need to look that up. I can use the find action tab for that. So the find action tab is very similar to the lock time component that you're used to, where you're able to look up the project, the mouse on the action, and then log your time. So maybe I'm going to be logging time to the Forefront project. Time there. Again, I can choose to either log time directly by putting in hours completed or start a timer. And that timer will be reflected in the first tab once I refresh it. So any time log that requires approval uh, will be displayed in the uh, Submit for Approval tab, whether I create it from the uh, uh, Find Action, the This Week tab, or through the desktop. Um, so uh, as you can see, I've got a few different time logs in here, uh, and, uh, and I can see those details in there. And if I need to adjust something, I can use the pencil icon to go ahead and update some of those uh, details over there. So I'm, I'm seeing the time log ID. I'm seeing some of those fields from the uh, time log. I like the date, the action name, project name, non billable indicator, time log type, and emails, and so on. Um, I've also got the pencil icon again to edit any information. I've got the R's there, and I've got the submit icon. So the submit icon will submit that individual time log uh, for approval. And now the uh, approver will uh, see that time will come through on the approval tab within the timesheet or the list view if you're using the list view. Um, I've also got the um, submit icon at the top over here, uh, and this allows me to submit all of my time logs uh, for approval. So I can do that, and uh, that will go ahead and submit those time logs for approval. Uh, another thing to note within the um, within the time mobile app time logger is that the last use tab will be remembered. So whether that's to uh, to do with the um, last use tab or last used uh, selection for the action list view. So if I'm using next week, and uh, let's keep that at submit for approval. If I close that out, open up the app again. As you can see, I am now back on the submit for approval tab and the action list uh, was pre-selected to next week. Now let's go over how you can add uh, some custom fields in here um, using the field sets, uh, as well as how you can add this component and be, uh, access it from the mobile app. All right, so I am on the setup page uh, in my org, and um, let's go over how you can add the uh, mobile app time logger to the Salesforce mobile app. Um, so I'm in setup, I can look up Salesforce navigation, 
And you'll find this under apps, mobile apps, Salesforce, and Salesforce navigation. So from here, what you want to do is look for the time logger uh, item, navigation item, bring that onto the right hand side and click save. Now, when you go into the Salesforce mobile app, you'll be able to look that uh, look that item up uh, uh, using the search function. Um, if you want to see it in a uh, custom app that you've got, uh, you should be able to add that in from there as well. So I've got the uh, Lightning App Builder open for one of my custom apps. I can look up the time logger and I can bring that onto the right hand side, readjust it and click save. If you'd like to add it to the uh, community side, um, you can you can also do the same here. So within the community, uh, I've created a new tab in here. Uh, it's a new page um, that I'm seeing here. And what I've done is added the lock time component. So just look that up and drag that onto your page. And when you access the uh, this tab or that page uh, where you've added the lock time component in the context of a mobile browser, it will automatically display the mobile app time logger for you. Um, it's the same process uh, for the uh, if you if you're using it internally, if you'd like to add the mobile app time logger as a component for internal users uh, or accessing it from the mobile, um, you'll you'll basically be using the Lightning App Builder, and you just need to drag that component in onto a, a home page or an app page. Um, so that's how you can add the uh, component. Um, lastly, let's go over the field sets. Um, so we have field sets on the action and the time log object. Uh, let's open up the action object as well as the time log object. This will allow us to control what fields we see uh, on, on the different tabs within the um, uh, mobile app time logger. So I'm on the action object. I'll just navigate to the field sets uh, tab here. So from here, I've got the mobile time logger fields field set. So as the description says, the fields displayed in the action list tab of the uh, mobile app time logger. So once I open that up, I'll be able to see some additional fields in there. So I've, I've put in some custom fields. I've got the start date, end date, uh, action notes. Maybe I don't want to see the action notes, but maybe I want to see something else like the action owner. Uh, I can do that. Go ahead and click Save. So now once I go back into the application, refresh my page, uh, it will now show me all, all that additional information on the action list view tab. Uh, let's go through the field sets on the time log. So on the time log, I've got two field sets. I've got the field set uh, mobile time logger add time log fields and mobile time logger time log fields. Um, so the first one is on when you're editing a time log uh, within the mobile app time logger, uh, you'll be able to add custom fields in there. And the second one is for the fields that are displayed uh, within the submit for approval tab. So you've got different time logs in there. You can adjust what information you'd like to see, uh, and then you can make a decision whether you need to update something else on that time log or just submit it for approval. So that's a quick way for you to um, see what what uh, what is in up to date, what is, and you can make that change. So let's go through and put some information there. So I've got the maybe I've got too much information here. Maybe I need to re remove some things that I'm not using. So I, you can do that as well. So let's remove some of this here. Yeah, let's uh, let's remove some of that from there and go ahead and click save. Let's go ahead and review the uh, next field set. So I've got. Uh, date of the action, project name, non billable type, and notes. Uh, I might want to put in case as well if I've associated cases and um, issue records if, if I've done that as well. Let's go ahead and save. Now let's switch back to the mobile app and then we'll see all these fields in there. All right, so I am back in the uh, uh, mobile app and uh, I have just added in the um, field, uh, fields, the custom field sets for the action and the time log object. So if I go back into the time logger, um, I'll now see the fields that I added in. So I've got the start and end date as well as the action owner uh, under each action. And if I if I go ahead and put some time in here, click the pencil icon, uh, I've got some limited fields in here. Uh, some of the fields that are removed, uh, I, I cannot see them anymore, so that's good. Um, I can go ahead and put some details in here. So I can maybe associate it with the case and click save and we'll go ahead and save that so those are the two different time log uh, field sets covered let's jump to the submit for approval and you'll see i've got the additional fields in there as well so i've got the case i've got the issue as well so i can go ahead and submit that everything looks good and let's submit for approval now
All right, so that covers the mobile app timeover and version control. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us at supporterfree.com or by the link uh, mentioned here. Uh, we've got a lot of free, free free resources available to you, like the user guide, uh, training videos, uh, the knowledge base, as well as the learning portal. Um, that's all, and thank you very much.